seen it, but it definitely looks a little bit more standard, something we've seen bringing back, though, a Pokemon we've seen previously in that Mudsdale. I say uh, previously, we saw it about two minutes ago. It's actually the exact same six Pokemon. <laughs> it is. It could be a very similar setup of them. I think there's going to be a couple of adaptations in this to make sure that it, of course, doesn't quite, you know, match up to it. It gives him something to think about. But, you know, Alex's team was very interesting. It is going to be, for the record, Alex on the bottom side of your screen. And then when we cut to the game, of course, we are going to have uh, Emilio on the top. Yeah, uh, for those of you who did not watch Alex's match from home, uh, Alex is running Garchomp, Arcanine, Celesteela, Tapu Koko, Slowking, and Snorlax. Uh, the players are actually ready. The leads are already sent out. Alex Gomez to your left, Emilio Forbes, uh, hailing from Northern California, actually, on the right. Uh, Kartana and Tapu Koko leads for Emilio. On the bottom, Snorlax and Tapu Koko leads for Alex Gomez. Uh, yeah. Tapu Koko has been so popular today. It, it's absolutely unreal. It's right up there with the Arcanine, and I'm always interested to see how they match up together. Yep, and Emilio immediately switching out, gonna switch into Mudsdale. Uh, Tapu Koko using this turn to Volt Switch out, boosted by that Electric Terrain, gonna reveal the Life Orb. So, like I said, you know, different, same six Pokemon, different builds here. Yeah, it's very interesting to see them matching up. Getting a little bit of damage down with that Volt Switch and being able to readjust the board is very, very good for Emilio. Definitely something he wants to keep in mind. And getting the Intimidate down is going to help mitigate the damage of that Snorlax, force it into using something like a Curse. A very interesting reveal of hidden power here from Alex's side. Yep, hidden power connecting into that what was the Cartana slot, so I can only assume that that is going to be hidden power fire. Uh, Snorlax using this turn to stockpile. Uh, it's a part of that very popular growing set in terms of Snorlax set where it has access to belly jump and stockpile. Yeah, it really doubles down on setting itself yep. up. And then later in the day, coming around and hitting with those returns after a big belly drum and, and making sure it's got a berry ready for it. It does take another attack. It did take a little bit of damage, not activating the berry just yet, but it could come around. The switch into Mudsdale, very, very smart, though, being able to take that hidden power fire a little bit better than the Kartana. Uh, took it really bad. It didn't do about 100% damage. Um, bringing the Arcanine definitely helped with this Snorlax as well. Be very curious to see what Emilio goes for with this Mudsdale. Has the option to hit the Tapu Koko with a high horsepower, but then it could be a little bit more concerned about this Snorlax. This switch could make the high horsepower look very foolish. Yep, Cell Seal switching in right here, probably trying to take a possible uh, high horsepower. Uh, Mudsdale still not protecting as Arcanine protects. Mudsdale using high horsepower straight into the Cell Seal and Snorlax again content to set up. Uh, gonna build up its defenses a little bit, gonna try to stay on the field as long as possible. Uh, now it is, at, it is at two stages of increased special defense, it is at two stages of increased regular defense, and you know what? It could probably go for another stockpile if it really wants to because nothing on this field threatens it. It really has no reason not to. Of course, we do know that some of these um, Mudsdales do bring close combat, but after two stockpiles, probably going to be very, very limited in the actual amount of damage it's going to be putting out every single turn, especially after an Intimidate from this Arcanine on Alex's side. Yeah, an Arcanine on Alex's side comes in dropping yet another Intimidate onto the Mudsdale and the uh, Arcanine. Arcanine here revealing Will-O-Wisp, going to burn this Snorlax, going to make sure that its damage output, even when it gets Belly Drum up, uh, could possibly be uh, weakened as, well, Snorlax uses his turn to go for yet another stockpile. Uh, the burn damage on that Snorlax should be a bit close to activating the berry that it's most likely carrying. Uh, gonna be kind of close, not quite. Not quite not enough. Quite. No, it needs a few more hit points to get to that berry activation. But anything, any attack is gonna do so little, it'll just put it right in that berry range and then bring it right back up to full. Then he's pretty much at leisure to try and work in a recycle somewhere in there. And then once he's got that recycle in play, then he'd be able to set up a belly drum to obviously mitigate the effect of this burn and then just start dealing damage. Now he's got the Arcanine on his side of the field. He doesn't really have a big use for damage-wise right now, but could definitely draw some attention away, maybe try and match up with something like the uh, Flare Blitz into the opposing Arcanine, or depending on what it has, you know, when we talked about Arcanine, it has so many options outside of what it usually uses, and it may be able to start grinding out this game for itself. Emilio switching out here, going to go into Tapu Koko for that Arcanine that has been replaced. Alex's Arcanine now using Flare Blitz, going to hit that Tapu Koko, doing a lot of damage. Uh, not that bulky of a Tapu Koko, much more uh, focus on going all-out offense, I believe. As the Arcanine gets hit with a high horsepower, of course, that is going to go ahead and activate that berry that uh, that Arcanines love to munch on because they're such good doggos. Uh, the Mago Berry going to go ahead and activate. 
and well, the Snorlax uh, goes for an attack onto that Tapu Koko, doing a good amount of damage. It's going to be that uh, return, as that's going to go ahead and activate the berry for Snorlax. Yeah, the burn finally gets that figgy berry activated. But that return, even though it didn't do a lot of damage, could be very, very important, because now the Arcanine on Alex's side of the field will be able to pick up the knockout on Tapu Koko with extreme speed very comfortably, not having to worry about that. The Mudsdale, he just doesn't seem to care about. Now he's back to full health, you know, he could work in a recycle, then a belly drum. I think that Snorlax just wanted to at least consume its berry once, so then it would be able to start this recycle cycle and, and work in things like the belly drum, which it's going to need. If he can get all that set up, though, there's not really many ways on Emilio's team to just start dealing with this, unless the Kartana's in there. You know, that's what he really needs to do with the Snorlax. Yeah, uh, Emilio does have access to the Kartana. We've seen it before, and Kartana can bypass all his defense boosts with the Sacred Sword. He does have it. We did see it in turn one, actually, which it switched out for the Mudsdale to take that hidden power. Yeah, but you have to be able to deal with the Tapu Koko and the Arcanine first in order so that you can allow the Kartana to deal with the Snorlax. So maybe that's the end game that Emilio is actually setting up for as Arcanine switches in, going to go ahead and intimidate. Uh, we still haven't seen a belly drum for that Snorlax yet, so that Snorlax is not doing much damage at all. It needs to recycle first, which is what it's going to be doing here. It has to recycle, so it has a berry when it loses 50% of its health, that it will be able to recover it almost immediately. Now on this turn, interestingly, Emilio could really do his best to shut down that belly drum by double targeting it first. Then what would happen is if he belly drums, you know, the berry would activate at that point. And then if he belly drums, curiously enough, you know, he's going to activate his berry, but still be kind of low around that, you know, 50, 60% mark. It's very interesting to see this Snorlax just keep setting up. Should be a free belly drum, but Tapu Koko getting out of there. Yep, and Mudsdale comes back in, uh, maybe trying to take a uh, return or possibly a Flare Blitz as well. But Arcanine switches out here, going to go back into Tapu Koko. Uh, you know, normally the Kartana would feel fairly safe against that Tapu Koko, but um, Alex already revealing that it does have a hidden power that is going to be targeting down that Kartana if it hits the field. Now, Arcanine on Emilio's side, using Flare Blitz, going to connect on top of Koko, doing a lot of damage. That's actually good damage right there. That's very significant damage as we see Snorlax finally getting itself set up. All this investment has got to come good sometimes, and this really is the beginning of those good times for Snorlax. Yep, Snorlax ready to go on the offensive. It's all set up. It's maxed out its uh, defenses in terms of what it can actually set up, and of course it's maximized its attack, bringing it all the way up to six stages of increased attack almost immediately at the cost of half the hit points. Uh, Snorlax is going to be a huge threat right now. It is burned, which means that the damage output is going to be half from all physical moves, which of course Snorlax loves. Yeah, that's a real shame. If it had Facade, it would be in a uh, absolutely fantastic position. But, you know, Alex, even with the burn coming in, has gone for the full shebang when he's trying to set up on this Snorlax. He's got three stockpiles, he's got a belly drum, he's tolerating the burn, and he's probably going to work in some recycles there as well. He definitely has time this turn, I think, to throw an attack out to something. Pretty much take a knockout very, very likely if the Tabu Koko was going to help, which it's not and then get another recycle in next turn. Arcanine switching in for Alex's side. Uh, Milu right now is going to have to make some sort of play to predict it. Uh, that's kind of a kind of a dangerous switch, but most likely what's going to happen is this Snorlax is going to try to pick up the KO on that Mudsdale here. Uh, Emilio using Flare Blitz from the Arcanine, targeting down Alex's Arcanine here, as Mudsdale using high horsepower going to connect onto that Arcanine. It is enough going to be... It is going to be enough to pick up the KO, so one threat to that Kartana, down. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, actually, to see how this one matched up. You know, Return is going to connect with Arcanine and take a, a pretty clean knockout there, even with the burn in place, the Belly Drum, just paying off. And Snorlax is still in a great position. I did like the double target there from Emilio to cover that switch, knowing that he needs to get rid of both Arcanine and Tapu Koko now. Getting rid of one of them is absolutely great, but overall... It's still a fairly tough position for him, I think. You know, he's got to get this Kartana at a safe time. And Alex still has Tapu Koko, which he's revealed has a hidden power he wants to target down that Kartana with. And, of course, Celesteel is also still in the back as well. Yeah, that's something that, mm -hmm. it, you know, could be very, very concerning to see exactly how this one shakes out. Alex showing off his Tapu Koko against, you know, a weak Tapu Koko overall. It, it's definitely a curious situation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure if the players know which Tapu Koko is faster, if any is faster, or it's going to come down to a speed tie. Uh, right now, Emilio, he also has to maintain this Tapu Koko in the back just in case uh, for that Celesteela that uh, Alex has in the back. But at the same time, you can't really switch out because you don't want your, you don't want a prediction. You don't want 
Alex make a great play by going for a hidden power fight yeah, outside, you, which is actually a good move anyways. Yeah, it would probably take the knockout on the Tapu Koko. It, it's yeah. very, very low anyway, and it, it's not exactly, you know, a bulky Tapu Koko based on how much damage it's been doing. You know, the, the Tapu Koko on Emilio's side as well, you know, could potentially almost knock itself out with the life orb. That's really, really important. Yeah, Tapu Koko now using Thunderbolt here. Uh, gonna hit that Cell of Steel, doing a lot of damage. Picks up the one-hit KO with that life orb, so big, big, big damage right there as Tapu Koko hangs on with just one Ooh, hit point. That's so essential. No way. Mudsdale trying to get some damage down on Snorlax with a heavy slam. It's doing such negligible damage. For sure right there what that Mudsdale was doing was just trying to ensure that KO on that Tapu Koko. That's why it was that heavy slam. Really wanted to hit into that slot right there. Yeah, but overall, you know, getting rid of that Silver Steeder on the way in, even though Snorlax is set up, there's only one threat left to the Kartana. The Kartana, which, by the way, is going to be ignoring all those defense boosts you spent your time setting up. So overall, you know, if the Tapu Koko on Emilio's side is faster, you know, which is something we saw with it, just the way this game's been shaping up, you know, this Tapu Koko is around. It's got one more chance to attack. And if it can do that, you know, it's going to be in a good position as Mudsdale is the Pokemon protecting this turn. Ooh, Tapu Koko on Emilio's side now, going for a Thunderbolt into that Tapu Koko slot. Not enough to pick up the KO, uh, but Tapu Koko does KO itself here. Oh boy, this is so close here and just game one. Tapu Koko using Dazzling Gleam, going to connect onto that Protect, so not doing any damage at all. But Snorlax is using this turn to set up a uh, Recycle here, so now... Uh, it's, it's close. It's got a berry, but Alex is still in the driving seat, particularly because he's managed to keep his t Tapu Koko around until the reveal of this Kartana. That's very, very important. He did, of course, take damage last turn. So he has the option to protect it to try and match the protect of Emilio's Kartana. And this Snorlax, the amount of damage it does to Mudsdale should be enough to tidy it up. So overall, I think if Alex just goes for these attacks, he's still going to be in a very good position, especially because of the recycle on that Snorlax. It's going to be close, but I think an offensive play is going to be the one. It's it's going to come down to whether or not Emilio, uh, what play Emilio makes. Is Cartana just going to detect here and Tapu Koko goes for like a possible Dazzling Gleam to pick up the KO on the Mudsdale? Or is... It's safer to go for the uh, possible hidden power into that slot, but also at the same time threatening to lose your Tapu Koko. So it's still a mind game. It's a 50-50 here. Kartana using Detect here. Uh, not going to want to take damage at all. Uh, ooh, Tapu Koko goes for a hidden power. And if Mudsdale can connect here, using that Heavy Slam to pick up the KO on that Tapu Koko, Emilio playing very, very well now. Yeah, I think Emilio made the right call there to Detect. He knew he had a way to knock out, of course, that Tapu Koko, and I think Alex needed to get a protect down on his Tapu Koko there. If he'd have done that, then we'd have been one on one with Kartana versus Tapu Koko, with of course the yeah. hidden power going towards that. But it doesn't go for that play, maybe a little overzealous with it. I don't think Snorlax is completely out just yet, but it's definitely not in a good position because those defense boosts are going to be completely ignored by a sacred sword. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the burn is going to be paying off. You know, Kartana can. Kartana does have a sky high uh, physical defense stat. And Kartana using this turn to set up a sword stance here. Going to make sure it gets a little bit extra damage here. Uh, Snorlax right there expecting a sacred sword, uh, trying to recycle back up to full health. But instead, it's going to eat the berry thanks to the burn damage here. So this Kartana trying to set up for a one hit KO on the Snorlax. I think if the Snorlax had gone for an attack there, actually, we could be seeing a slightly different game, but he does let the Sword Stance go up for free, meaning this Sacred Sword oh. is going to be a one-hit knockout. Massive damage from that Kartana, so Emilio playing exceptionally well. Alex, of course, is also playing exceptionally well as well, but it really came down to that one turn where it was that Tapu Koko, do I go for the Hidden Power Fire, or do I try to knock out that Mudsdale somehow? Yeah, Emilio played that very smartly. I think it was the safest play for him, really, to just keep that Kartana safe. And, you know, Tapu Koko being very, very aggressive on Alex's side, trying to pick up the knockout with hidden power. He is going to have to conserve these Pokemon that he has to deal with Kartana if he wants to win because of how much time and investment he puts into Snorlax. He needs to get more out of it. And although it picked up some good knockouts and a number of knockouts, it didn't have an answer to the most obvious counter on Emilio's team. I know the six Pokemon he's been using 
a really established as a six Pokemon. A number of Portuguese players, actually, Edu, uh, one of our top finishers at Worlds last year, has been using this set of six and absolutely raving about it throughout the you know the past few weeks in the build up to this tournament. It's an established six, and it shocks me that Alex, you know. Still didn't realize the, the threat that Cartana was to him at all times. Yeah, no, absolutely. Of course, Emilio is showing some of the text here. Uh, now Alex knows for sure that the uh, Cartana has Swords Dance, so uh, Cartana is going to be a huge threat to that Snorlax. And, you know, Alex knew his outs right there. You know, he is a very talented, he is a very smart player. You know, Alex would beat me absolutely up and down any battlefield that we decided to play Most Pokemon on. Most people would, to be honest. Yeah, well, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. But at the same time, it really just came down to that. And, you know, I think that was the first play I thought that would have happened. You know, like, I think that well, Katana's going to detect here. There was other plays in there that, you know, were, were very smart from Emilio to make the reads. The one where the Seller Stealer comes in on the Thunderbolt, immediately getting knocked out thanks to the electric terrain. You can't give up Celesteel like that. There's no way you can give that up and still be in an advantageous position. Celesteel also carries Flamethrower, which is another Kartana uh, counter. And really, this team that Alex has designed, this team that Alex has brought, is designed to make sure that that Snorlax can stay around. But you should be beating Kartana with this. And to see one securing the final knockout is kind of something that Alex has to look at and think, how did I not have at least one turn mm -hmm. to attack this Kartana? Emilio was very smart to bail it out turn one. Picking up, you know, on the hidden power fire being an option, something that not many Tapu Koko have been bringing, but knowing its existence made him play a certain way and making the right call. I think we're going to see a completely Ooh. different ball game from Alex here. Changing it up here, Alex using Slow King and Tapu Koko. Emilio running the Mudsdale and the Tapu Koko as, uh, well, not as well, but another Tapu Koko there. Um, I believe it was Emilio's Tapu Koko that actually set the terrain there, so possibly an indication of speed. Uh, if Slow King sets up Trick Room, Mudsdale doesn't mind. I think this is going to be a very interesting matchup, but it certainly leans towards Emilio in this one. His Tapu Koko answers the Slow King, especially in electric terrain. May fall a little bit short without, you know, a, a Z move, because Slow King is a, a very, very bulky Pokemon. But it's still going to put itself in very good range. Mudsdale, of course, with those high horsepowers, putting a good threat in the direction of the Tapu Koko, which is switching out the Arcanine to try and mitigate some of that damage with an Intimidate. Arcanine switching in here, using Intimidate on that Mudsdale. Of course, Tapu Koko is still going to be hitting fairly strong here. Ooh, a Wakan Berry going to activate. I haven't seen one of those berries in a very long time. Going to reduce the amount of damage that that, thun that the Volt Switch does because, you know, it prevents super effective Reduces damage. the damage of Electro types, yeah. But even with the damage reduction from that Wakan Berry, you see that the Volt Switch wouldn't have taken the knockout, interestingly, it because it halves it and it didn't fall under half. Yeah, and, you know, Slow King is the bulkier brother of Slowbro in terms of special defense. Slowbro is more physically defensive. Uh, Arcanine going to switch in for Emilio, going to use Intimidate onto the... Uh, onto the uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm so tired. Yeah, getting but the Intimidate down. using Intimidate, is, is, or the Trick Room. <laughs> yeah, Slowking gets Trick Room up. The Intimidate's exchanged. I think it's very interesting to see that the Intimidate, of course, came from the Vault Switching of Arcanine on Emilio's side. So he got it down on the Arcanine. The Arcanine, when it came in, only got it down on the Mudsdale. But in this case, probably a lot more valuable on the Mudsdale, because Mudsdale is the Pokemon in this matchup that's in a great position. While Slowking set up Trick Room, and it may be able to capitalize on it with something like a Scold, it is going to lead and pave the way for that Snorlax for Alex. Snorlax switching in here, going to be operating under Trick Room, a mode that, uh, well, Alex's Snorlax probably prefers to be in. As Mudsdale continuing continuing to use high horsepower here, going to connect onto that Snorlax. No stockpiles just yet. Arcanine using, ooh, Toxic, but the Mudsdale avoids it. Oh, and that's a bad miss. You don't want to be missing your Toxics on a Pokemon like Mudsdale. It's been one of those, particularly with physical attackers on Alex's side of the field, that he needs something. Every time he hits it, stamina's going to boost its defense. It's going to be a nightmare to deal with. M Toxic is one of those percentage of health every single time, and it would be much preferred, I think, to have that racking up over and over, you know? So overall, I think it's very, very smart to make that play, but it's so unfortunate for Alex to miss that Toxic. Yeah, and uh, well, the Snorlax is actually at threat to be burned, which actually kind of paid dividends last game. Even with the Belly Drum, the burn did so much work because that Mudsdale was not one-hit KO'd by a return. 
Snorlax now using this turn to set up a stockpile. It's pretty safe to do so. Uh, Slow King switching in for that Arcanine on Alex's side as Emilio's Arcanine again going for that burn. Huge Will is right here. He's gonna burn that Snorlax, slow it down just a little bit. Well, Alex is forced into making very similar to plays to the ones it did in the last game, actually. We saw, of course, this Snorlax just go through it. The burn came in a little bit later, but he's still gonna pretty much take the same game plan through this overall. Set up your stockpiles, work your recycles in, get your belly drum in, and then finally get some attacks in. And overall, you know, it's gonna be a, a real bit of a, a long one for Alex here. I don't think he's in a great position to, to really capitalize on that. But Sloking coming in is gonna help out. It's gonna have access to a water type attack of some sort potentially that's pretty much gonna be able to help against both Mudsdale and Arcanine. It switched out to pave the way for Snorlax, but now it can start capitalizing if it doesn't switch out. Slow King switching out. Arcanine going to come back in with another Intimidate. Going to be huge against Mudsdale. Going to be huge against Emilio's Arcanine as well. Yeah, it's a very big turn to get these Intimidates down. Snorlax not trying to get all the stockpiles in before it gets that belly drum in. Really wants to just get going. Knowing its time is going to be running out. Activate its berry using the uh, belly drum. Bring itself back up to about 75%, maybe a little bit less. As Mudsdale, mm. another bad miss That's a for the super Mudsdale. Bad miss right there. Yeah, not getting the high horsepower damage down is good. And Argonne just getting some chip damage down on Snarl. Yeah, not the kind of Snarl that, you know, in the previous match we, uh, Arsenal enjoyed seeing. Uh, in this case, Snarl on Snorlax and Arcanine not going to matter too much, but this Snorlax is ready to go, of course. Uh, Mudsdale is going to be able to survive one return. I believe Arcanine might be able to survive a return as well because of that burn. Uh, not sure if we actually saw it play out last time, but uh, we haven't seen much else. Like, we've seen the top of Coco on Emilio's side. It's still in the back. Yes, it, it certainly is. You know, but Overall, you know, I think the Snorlax is going to struggle a little bit to deal with it. You know, it's going to be certainly difficult as it, it plays through this. It, it's definitely a couple of steps behind where it was in the previous game. The Arcanine going for the Snarl on the other side definitely feels like a suboptimal play. Um, maybe wants to get a little bit more, but missing that high horsepower is absolutely galling if you're Emilio. Getting that damage down, of course, onto that Arcanine would have been big. If he goes for it again, you know, this Slow King's just going in and out to benefit from this Regenerator, and it comes back in looking alarmingly healthy. Yeah, Regenerator is such a great ability. Snorlax using this turn to recycle here. Gonna try to set up for the end game as Snorlax finds a Figgy Berry. Arcanine using Snarl here, gonna connect onto that Slow King. Uh, gonna kind of weaken the, uh, the damage output from that Slow King if it does have a Water-type move, whether it be Scald, Surf, whatever it may carry. Yeah, it's very interesting to see exactly how that one pans out. The Trick Room does end as the Twisted Dimensions a return to normal. But Sloking, after switching in and out, getting a bit of regeneration going on there, you know, that's what we like to see and bringing it back in to set up the Trick Room. The Snorlax is going to need the Trick Room. That's a matter of fact. Even though it has the berry, it's kind of got a little bit of time on its hands. It's got the belly drum in place, so it, it wants to start attacking. But getting the Trick Room set up for it would be fantastic. So even if he goes for an attack this turn, maybe gets close to a knockout, bringing something very, very low. Sloking can set up Trick Room. And then the Snorlax and Sloking could work in combination, where Snorlax brings it very, very low, Sloking tidies it up. These two could be a very potent combination together. All right. Oh, Sloking avoids as Mudsdale uses a high horsepower. Sorry, Sloking avoided the Snarl from just a bit earlier. Uh, Snorlax now using this turn to go for a return. Going to hit that Mudsdale doing about 60% right there. Mudsdale is going to boost itself with a stamina, but that's not going to matter if Sloking can at least hit it from the special spectrum. Uh, Sloking does use this turn to set up a trick room, so a good position right now for Alex to try to seal the deal here. Yeah, well, we see the Sloking has had one stage of lowered special attack, but his Snorlax consumes the berry due to some assistance from the burn. It's actually very, very close to full. One hit point short overall. Um, but this Mudsdale didn't get knocked out. It, it's going to be close, of course, that the Slow King needs to do it with Skull because it's going to be tough for Snorlax to start doing it with these physical attacks while Stamina keeps building up its physical defense. This turn, Snorlax needs to start looking over at Arcanine, see if it can deal with it over there and just really pick up the pace. This is the second Trick Room of the game. It's, it's very, very good for Alex that he's managed to set up another one. But he needs to make sure he capitalizes on it in full. He can't get to the end of this Trick Room and be struggling still. And that's what Emilio is going to have to force him to do. This Slow King switching out 
is certainly making it interesting and a little bit harder to capitalize on. Yeah, especially when the Pokemon that comes back in is the Arcanine. It's going to be intimidating the Mudsdale and the Arcanine on Emilio's side. Again, just weakening the damage output on the other side of the field, protecting that Snorlax so well. As the return is not enough to pick up the KO on Mudsdale, Mudsdale's stamina is going to activate, but it's not going to matter too much. Next hit is going to go. Oh, whoa, well, I spoke a bit earlier. I forgot there's a, there's a barrier. Yeah, there's one of those 50% yeah. berries coming in, healing it back up, and now it's got another benefit of, of course, the stamina to go for. Even after the Intimidates, Mudsdale is not doing much to that Arcanine. Yeah, and Arcanine's Still content on setting up Snarls here, just in case that Slowking decided to stay in. So uh, Alex trying to take advantage of that situation right there with a switch, but if that Slowking stayed in and just scalded, that would have been a KO'd Mudsdale. Yes, that's a very interesting switch. Alex prioritizing the use of the ability Regenerator overtaking the knockouts, and I don't know if that's quite the play. He's definitely leaving a door open for Emilio here. While the Trick Room's in play, Alex needs to be taking more knockouts. The Mudsdale is probably, you know, about the same, if not a little bit healthier than it started the previous turn at because it managed to hang on through that return from Alex's Snorlax. Overall, you know, Alex needs to be picking up a knockout in the next one, two, even three turns while we, we round out this Trick Room. And he's really running out of tools to do it. A lot of switching here, making these lives a little bit harder. Sloking this time should be able to start capitalizing on it, unless it switches into another Snarl. Ooh, Mudsdale protecting here. Uh, not going to want to get KO'd just yet, but I think that was the turn that Mudsdale could have gone on the offensive as Snorlax goes for a return. Going to go ahead and hit that Arcanine, activate its berry. I believe it was the Mago berry. Nope, the Aya Papa berry. It was Alex's with the Mago berry, I believe, or it was from the previous match. Anyways, the Arcanine on Emilio's side using Flare Blitz here going to connect onto that Snorlax. Again, the Intimidates, that stockpile piling on so much for that Snorlax. Weirdly enough, that would have been the turn for Emilio to throw a Snarl out blind, hoping that Slowking was coming back in. He doesn't go for it, gets a little bit of chip damage down on Snorlax, but getting a Snarl down would have been great. The Slowking's now back at pretty much full health after another round of regenerated recovery. You know, it's in a good position. We see Alex constantly switching it in and out because he clearly wants it to be hitting at full power. Now he's not been afflicted by that snarl on the way in. He may be capitalizing on these turns with the Slowking. He needs to start hitting Mudsdale on that special side of the spectrum with the Skulls. The Arcanine as well is going to be there trying to deal with it. You know, special attacks would be doing an absolute number on this Arcanine. Snorlax can bring it close to return, but I think Skulls from Slowking are going to be so, so important. Snorlax using Recycle here, gonna find itself a Figgy Berry to munch on later on if it needs just a little bit more energy. Slowking using Skull here, gonna connect onto Mudsdale, hitting on the other side of the spectrum, but Mudsdale hanging on with just a sliver of health. I don't believe a burn is gonna happen, so Mudsdale using this turn to go for a close combat, saving it just for now, but again, those Intimidates have paid off so much for Alex because that did nothing. Absolutely nothing. Barely any damage done at all. Arcanine using Snarl here, going to connect on a Slowking and drop its special attack stat. Yeah, we see the benefit of this actual switch. Not only is Slowking getting out to save itself from the drops from Snarl and get some Regenerator, it's also getting Intimidate down on this Mudsdale. It looks like this Snorlax is just in such a good position. He doesn't really have anything on Emilio's side of the field right now threatening it. Of course, if that Katana's in the back and it could turn up at the opportune moment, which is when Trick Room ends, then he would be able to start taking knockouts. But at the moment, it just looks very, very comfortable for Alex's Snorlax. Slowking would be able to pick up a knockout with Skull. This time, Mudsdale doesn't have a way out, and Snorlax can just really go for this Arcanine under the Trick Room. We see those Intimidates paying off with that close combat doing so little damage. Boy, those, uh, that was a lot of great switching from Alex. You know, you had to think if you're Emilio, <sighs> Was I? It, would I have been able to capitalize on any of those switches? Maybe uh, go for a prediction. Maybe go for a, uh, a a different move instead of protecting Mudsdale as well. Maybe trying to pick off that Arcanine with high horse powers. Uh, Slowking back at full health and uh, Melio now finally forced a switch to reset those uh, those 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 this, stat drops. This switch could be really nasty if there is a return from Snorlax going towards that Tapu Koko. That could be make this game very much one-sided. It's not going to be that on this turn though. Snorlax now using Recycle here, Slowking using Flamethrower, going to connect on to the Mudsdale and pick up the KO. So now this is actually a decent position uh, for Emilio to try and take advantage of the Trick Room expiring. But again, you know that... If Kartana comes back in, you you just saw Flamethrower <laughs> from, from the Slowking, so you have to watch out for that. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you can KO the Snorlax in one go. Yes, he doesn't have all the, um, the stockpiles, even though they don't matter against the Sacred Sword. 
So overall, what I really like to see here is, is Tapu Koko literally go for Slow King. And Katana may be forced to just try and deal with Snorlax in the same way it did. You know, set up a Swords Dance and just start knocking stuff out. If the Slow King's removed from play, there's no options on Alex's side to reset that Trick Room. So the Slow King is either going to be forced out just because it can't handle the Tapu Koko in this electric terrain, or of course, it you know it's not going to be in a great position overall. If you try and bring in something like Arcanine, that's still going to take a whole heap of damage. That's exactly what's coming in. Arcanine switching in for that Slow King, most likely either going to take a Thunderbolt or a possible Leaf Blade here. Going to use Intimidate though, going to go ahead and drop Kartana's attack stat, but of course Kartana can easily also just... Oh, okay. All right, Tapu Koko protecting itself here. Ooh. Not going to want to take damage at all. Is it Kartana using Leaf Blade here? Right, exactly. Mm. Going to try to target down the uh, what was the Slow King right there. So Snorlax using Return, going to hit in that Protect. So not that bad, not that bad. No, not bad at all. Still a decent position. I think what Kartana may be trying to do here, curiously enough, is actually let Snorlax come down a little bit so it's a little closer to the berry activation range. Then it may be able to pick it up without having to worry about the berry. Of course, the Arcanine switching is good, but I feel it was a little bit telegraphed from Alex, showing that he's been prepared to basically switch this Slow King for Arcanine every single time. Was a switch I think Emilio could have capitalized on with a bigger attack in that turn, then just let Kartana set up a Swords Dance to try and, you know, negate the effects, of course, of that Intimidate. Then it would be at plus one and be in a good position. He's switching it out again. So much switching. Both these players wanting to maximize the Intimidate in this game. Yeah, and right here, Kartana using Sword Dance, using this turn to just set up just real quickly here as Snorlax using Return onto that Arcanine. Going to do a good amount of damage and pick up the KO, so I don't know if Emilio has the right pieces here to, to seal the deal. No, I think that turn where Slow King switched out for Arcanine, he really needed to get a little more out of that turn. You know, trading a little more aggressively could have paid off for him. And now he's kind of stuck in this very interesting situation. It is, of course, going to be Tapu Koko versus Tapu Koko. They don't exactly match up well, and he needs to deal with the Tapu Koko on Alex's side to avoid that hidden power fire. He doesn't have the option to switch out Kartana now. He is down to his last two. And I think, you know, he really needed to turn up the offense a little bit more, really go for it a couple of turns earlier. And now he's really up against it. The Snorlax again has shown just how potent it can be when it gets its setup overall. Yeah, oh boy. Yeah, it looks like this most likely will go to a game three. Yes, uh, uh, Alex with four Pokemon against Emilio's two. He's going to struggle again. Emilio may be looking to just try and deal with this Tapu Koko with the Tapu Koko of his own. But exchanging Thunderbolts is not going to be the way to do it. Very minimal amount of damage, probably about 25% on Alex's Tapu Koko. It does, again, go for the hidden power onto that Kartana, which has kept itself safe with the tech. But Snorlax rounding out this turn with a big return into the Tapu Koko, getting a knockout. And Kartana isn't going to be able to take a hidden power fire. It's going to get knocked out. And we are going to be fired into a game three. <sighs> End of the day, last match of the night, game three between two magnificent players. No player was going to give this one up easily. Both these players fighting to keep their tournament lives on the line. It's that simple. They need to keep these wins. Alex, very, very smiley after that round. Very comfortable in his play definitely felt like it had gone a whole lot better for him. I do like that he, you know, adapted very well to that game. And I think Emilio missed a couple of opportunities in that game to basically try and uh, swing it back while he was a Pokemon down. He had an option to start that comeback, didn't take advantage of it, and then in the end kind of got punished for it as he just started losing Pokemon to these returns. You know, overall, it was curious to see how it shaped up. The players are heading to game three looking deadly serious as we come round to it. Again, the team from Alex, we've seen it on stream earlier. It is his last round of the day, wants to be playing in that day two Swiss tomorrow. Garchomp, Arcanine, Celesteela, Tapu Koko, Slowking and Snorlax, that trick room option at the bottom of his team. And Emilio's team featuring Tapu Fini, Tapu Koko, Porygon 2, Mudsdale, Arcanine, and Kartana. The Mudsdale and Kartana have been so, so essential in, of course, the way that they've been playing. He's been keeping the Kartana for a safe time to end the game. And then he needs to be getting more out of the Mudsdale in the early game to do that. That's been so, so important. And in that previous game that we saw, Kartana basically wasn't able to get in a safe position. There were so many threats remaining from uh, Alex's side of the field. 
that he wasn't able to capitalize on that Kartana. But in game one, it went really, really well because Kartana came in at a premium time. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it's going to come down to this last game between Alex Gomez versus Emilio Estrada. Or, sorry, Emilio Forbes. And, well, it's, it's going to be an intense battle because nobody's going to give up anything. They're going to not give up anything for free. I think the slow king is a lot more important in this matchup than people give it credit for. Because Alex didn't go offensive with it very, very early at all. But then he, he kind of eked it out towards the end. Finally got a skull off. It didn't get the knockout, but it finally did the damage that he really, really needed to do. Um, basically, the way that it played out for him, you know, he was switching it so much, getting a lot of Intimidates down on the Arcanine, and also activating Regenerator over and over again on his Slow King. The Slow King is going to feature right off the bat here. Yep. Uh, back to the exact same leads as last time for Alex. No adjustments really made just yet. Tapu Koko and the Slow King are the Pokemon that Alex decides to go with. Emilio leading with Arcanine and the Tapu Koko. Again, Emilio's Tapu Koko kind of kind of setting the battlefield here. So uh, most likely yeah, you want to say that that is going to be a faster Tapu Koko. Yeah, Emilio's is faster. But it... You know, it's going to need to be very, very useful in this one. We have seen it, you know, dealing out damage, showing that it's got that life orb in this matchup. And then overall, you know, that may be enough damage to get the knockout on Sloking. It needs to do more than Volt Switch, though. That's the problem. Volt Switch wasn't enough after the Wakan Berry. Um, Thunderbolt isn't going to be enough either, just because it's not that much more powerful. So if, you know, Alex wants it, Sloking is going to be able to set up Trick Room at the same time. Both the Pokemon on Alex's side of the field are going to have to worry a little bit about this Snarl from the Arcanine. You don't want to just give away a free amount of damage. Yeah, and Emilio not targeting down that uh, Slow King with a Volt Switch here. Instead, targeting down the Tapu Koko on Alex's side. Uh, not very effective damage, but still doing a decent amount of damage. So, well, it's going to switch out. And now Emilio gets to try to assess the situation a little bit more. Maybe bring in a possible Trick Room counter, which I believe is only going to be that Mudsdale. The Mudsdale would be a great addition to the field here for him. Knowing, of course, that that Trick Room is going to come out. And that the Slow King is going to be a little bit stuck. The Mudsdale also gives the option of absorbing that Bolt Switch. It is the big horse coming to join us on the field today. As Tapu Koko's Volt Switch does go towards the right target. It is going to hit that Arcanine here. Going to do a good amount of damage as well. Uh, again, thanks to that electric terrain, now going to switch out, and now Alex can go full-on Trick Room mode if he really wants to, but instead using this time to switch in Arcanine to be able to go for Intimidate onto both Mudsdale and Arcanine over on Emilio's side. So big, big Intimidate coming out from this Arcanine. So uh, good call. Arcanine using Snarl. Arcanine avoiding it, but it does hit the important target in terms of the Slow King. Going to go ahead and try to slow down that Scald or the possible flamethrower as Slow King uses turn to set up Trick Room. Yeah, I think that's actually a very fine miss on the Scald. Nothing to be worried about there. Uh, on the Snarl, rather. We'll be limiting the damage output of Scald and Flamethrower coming out of that Slow King. But both the Pokemon on the field, again, weak to Scald. You know, that's something that the Slow King is in probably a very good position to go for. And even though the damage output is lowered, you've got to remember with Scald, it has the option to catch those burns. Of course, you can't burn the Arcanine. But getting a burn on the Mudsdale would be so, so useful. The Arcanine on um, Alex's side of the field probably doesn't want to stick around, but it's got an Intimidate down. And as we saw in the previous game, he's one of the best players, actually, at rotating that Intimidate around and getting the most out of it. He doesn't have Sloking to switch in, but switching in one of those slightly, you know, bulky Trick Room Pokemon, the Snorlax would be great for it here. You know, as long as it doesn't get caught by a will on the way in, which would be a big prediction from Emilio, then he should be good. Snorlax, you're right, switches in for that Arcanine slot. Ooh, that Skull does not do that much damage to that Mudsdale. Gonna go ahead and activate that stamina here. Not after the Snarl. <laughs> Mudsdale using this turn to go for a high horsepower, gonna connect into what was that Arcanine slot, doing good damage, and Arcanine going for a Willis into that Snorlax slot. What a call! Ooh, that's a bad that miss. Is that a is bad one miss. that he really needed to hit. He he doubled down on that slot on the right-hand side of your screen there. He wanted to make sure, of course, that whatever came in, he was going to do some damage to. If we saw the Arcanine stay there, then it was going to take big damage from high horsepower, of course, not so much because of the Intimidate. But reading that Snorlax switch in, getting the burn that's been so, so valuable on it would have been absolutely great. And knowing about the threat of Will-O-Wisp, Alex may be more inclined to just look over to that Arcanine and try and deal with it as quickly as possible. A Scold and a Return, even without a Belly Drum could be very, very useful, maybe enough to deal with the Arcanine. And Emilio really wants to get that will of off, but he's got to do it at the premium time. Yeah, and time's running out right now for Alex. Uh, really thinking through this turn, you know, it, 
er tournament life is essentially on the line. Emilio now withdrawing Mudzil, not going to keep it in. Uh, going to switch out to Tapu Koko here and deal with his Slow King just a little bit better. Snorlax using the turn to set up a Belly Drum here. Going to go ahead and maximize its attack set at the cost of half of its hit points. But of course, you know, with the Gluttony ability and that Berry, it's just going to heal back. So that's one of the beauties of Snorlax. Yeah, Snorlax is so good at just sticking around. Oh. Slow King showing exactly what it does with its final move of the moveset. The Heal Pulse bringing Snorlax all the way back to full. Yep, and here Arcanine finally gets to connect on that Willows. Again, a bad miss earlier on uh, the turn before, but you know, now this is going to kind of slow down the Snorlax. Uh, slow King revealing its tech in Heal Pulse, which is kind of a cool tech because you heal back your Pokemon all the way to maximum health. Yeah, well, what this Slow King does is it kind of mitigates the need for Snorlax to work recycles into its roster of attacks. Now, Slow King can keep Snorlax at full health, maybe try and eke out a little bit of damage on turns where Snorlax doesn't require the Heal Pulse so much, but now Snorlax with the Belly Drum is pretty much free to knock out whatever it wants. The onus is now on Alex to make sure that every single turn, he's actually connecting with something on this Snorlax. He's not wasting it, throwing it into something like a Protect, He's just making sure he's picking up knockouts every single turn. A, a quick, you know, left, right, really wearing down the Pokemon on uh, Emilio's side. Both the Pokemon on the field right now are going to get knocked out if they're caught by a big return. Arcanine switching in here. Going to go ahead and, and go for yet another Intimidate onto the Arcanine on Emilio's side. There are still two turns of Trick Room left. That is a long time in terms of Trick Room turns while you're staring down a Belly Drum uh, Snorlax here. Emilio kind of realizing, well, I got to switch out here. Going to go into Kartana. Maybe taking that return just a little bit better. Emilio also withdrawing here. Going to go back into Mudzel. So both these Pokemon we know should be able to survive a return from the Snorlax as Snorlax goes for a return here into that Mudsdale slot. Mudsdale does hang on with just a sliver of hit points and activates that berry to heal back up, so it should be able to take more attacks. Yeah, that berry is going to be very, very annoying indeed. That Mudsdale getting rather healthy again. Probably not going to get knocked out by another return. It's going to be very, very close indeed. Snorlax was in a good position to start dealing big damage. With Trick Room up as well, this Arcanine is still a solid answer to the Kartana, and I don't think the Arcanine is really too worried about the Mudsdale from full health in particular. Yeah, uh, interesting thing to note, of course, is that Arcanine came in before that Mudsdale, so this Mudsdale is actually clean from any attack drops because that Slow King was slower and moved first. And yes, the Mudsdale not having the attack drops is great, but I still think it's going to fall a little bit short and potentially activate the berry on Alex's Arcanine. You know, we do know that Mudsdale, even though it has a great typing and a rather good ability, still lacks a little bit on the damage output, and I think that's why it's not been so popular over the course of this format. You really need a team around it to help it get all of these knockouts. Arcanine switching out here, kind of kind of caught in the wrong time. Slow King comes back out to set up yet another Trick Room, if possible, as Snorlax using this turn to go for a recycle. So, all right, well, now, Emilio gets a chance to capitalize here. Mudsdale using high horsepower. Gonna kick that Slow King, doing a good amount of damage as Kartana goes for a Leaf Blade here, hitting that Slow King. No more Trick Room for Alex. Great play right there to Leaf Blade that slot, just covering the bases. Yeah, Emilio making a couple of these turns really, really huge. But what he does is he doubles down on one of the slots. And he basically has always had the options to try and either knock out what's in play or just really neuter it. Now, neutering it in this case was removing the potential Trick Room. This Snorlax is not going to have a, a Heal Pulsing partner or a partner setting up Trick Room for it. Of course, this Intimidate is going to be rather annoying from the Arcanine, but with the Pokemon in the way they are right now, I do feel like, you know, there is going to be the potential to switch. Emilio has the Pokemon advantage just on numbers alone, and that allows some switches to come in. Snorlax is going to have to be very, very careful that it doesn't end up in a position where Kartana can just knock it out. Mudsdale can start trying to deal with this Arcanine overall. And I think Emilio has put himself in a very, very good position. Yeah, Emilio uh, currently up four, Pokemon to three. Of course, that burn from that Arcanine onto that Snorlax is such a huge play. And again, that switch just from a couple turns ago to double switch into Kartana and Mudsdale. Beautiful, beautiful switch. And now uh, Kartana going to go for an all-out pummeling here. Going to connect onto either the Snorlax or the Arcanine. 
going to be doing massive amounts of damage because of the beast boost it got. But of course, the Intimidate does mitigate some of that damage boost that it will get. The Intimidate does help, and I think bringing it on both these Pokemon is very helpful. But all out pummeling from Kartana is coming oh. off a crazy attack stat. It's going towards the Snorlax, of course. It's going to be super effective. Oh, and it's it does KO. get the knockout. Huge that is knockout. absolutely huge. The Snorlax now just cannot do any more. It didn't have the trick room. It's probably something that he wants to go down. Arcanine, if it goes for the Flare Blitz to Kartana, is going to take a big amount in recall, and that might put it in range for this Mudsdale to be a lot more useful. Kartana's done its job, though. Yeah, Kartana did its job. It knocked out Slow King. It knocked out the Snorlax, and now Mudsdale is setting up for a powerful high horsepower to hit this Arcanine. A lot of damage. Arcanine barely hangs on. The but it is going to go activating the berry. It around. Yes, activating the berry is great, but another one without another Intimidate should just do it, you know. And I just don't see many options, of course, coming out from Alex that are reliable answers to this Mudsdale. The Tapu Coco is certainly not one, and the Arcanine isn't one either. This Mudsdale should be able to just pretty much run through the back end of these last two Pokemon on Alex's side of the field. We also know that Amelia's Tapu Koko is faster, and with the electric terrain up, you know, that has an option to just deal a ton of damage to this Arcanine. So while Mudsdale could deal with this Tapu Koko comfortably, Tapu Koko can deal with Arcanine comfortably coming down from Emilio's side in that scenario. And it looks like Emilio is in the driving seat to push himself through to day two of Swiss tomorrow. So exceptionally well played from Emilio, really just finding his outs and uh, you know, that all-out pummeling, saving it for the last minute there. Uh, Tapu Koko on Emilio's side now, using Thunderbolt into that Arcanine Protect. Tapu Koko using Dazzling Gleam here, going to hit Mudsdale and that Tapu Koko. Mudsdale hang on, Tapu Koko hang on, activating that stamina. Mudsdale now going to go for a high horsepower. It is going to connect onto that Tapu Koko, picks up the KO. Emilio, oh no, no, never mind, just one hit point, just one hit point, just one hit point. Falling short, the <laughs> sure. invisible focus sash coming into play here. But we do have to remember and respect one thing. Emilio has the faster Tapu Koko. If he has a spread move such as, I don't know, Dazzling Gleam, he's going to be able to pick up the knockout on that Tapu Koko, and then Mudsdale can deal with the Arcanine. Dazzling Gleam connects onto the Tapu Koko, picks up the KO. Arcanine getting slowly chipped away from that Dazzling Gleam here. Uh, again, more life or recoil. This should do it. Arcanine using the Flare Blitz here, going to connect onto the Mudsdale. Those stamina boosts are so powerful. Not enough. Not Nowhere enough. Near. Mudsdale to round out this game. Again, I, I talked about it, it not being uh, the most useful. High house Needed power set up. connects and picks up the KO. Emilio Forbes moves on to day two of the 2017 North American International Championships. Exceptional set from both players. And, you know, to be able to defeat a player like Alex Gomez to advance on the day two, look at Emilio. He looks so pleased with himself. And like, he should be because he did something so, so important in best of three play that's dangerously underrated as we play these sets. And not a lot of players think about it until, I guess, you know, the day twos or the, the, the championship Sundays. The way that he managed to keep that Phytinium Z on the Kartana secret was so, so important. If those of you watching the match didn't understand how important it was, it completely caught Alex by surprise. He thought, you know, he didn't have the stockpiles, but he had the Intimidate. Looked like he might be able to try and work something out. The all-out pummeling just completely changed that. Yeah, way to save it, you know? Like, uh, I don't think we actually saw a Z-move come out until that all-out pummeling from that Kartana. So, uh, Emilio to hide that all-out pummeling just to the last second to secure his spot to day two. What an amazing set, and what an amazing set that was to be one of our last sets. Well, if we looked at the time during that game, they nearly took the full 50 minutes allotted. And in that time, of course, you're going to figure out each other's teams, get a lot of information about them, and be able to think about it very, very wisely. So with that information going into it, if you've got you know an ace in the hole to pull out in that last round, that completely changes your opponent's thinking, while Alex felt very comfortable that when he saw Kartana in game one, the way it needed to knock out his Snorlax was actually with the use of a sword stance. That kind of lulled him into a false sense of security to say, well, the only way he can reliably knock this out is going to be with that sword stance in addition to a sacred sword. I think keeping that Z-move secret was so, so important. There's such important moves every single time that bringing out of the last minute just completely changed the face of that game three. Man, oh, that has my heart rate all up in the air because that was such an exciting set and you know Alex Gomez played exceptionally well he adapted amazingly between game two games uh, one and two so it's it's fascinating right yeah oh no it's yeah. so 
it's so exciting to see exactly how these players play. And these games are the most high-pressure games of the day. There's no way you can deny that round 9 when you're on X and 2, in this case it would be 6 and 2 coming into it, are going to be the most high-pressure games of the day. So I think there's only really one thing to do. It's pretty easy for us to sit up here and talk about the games. But I think we'd like to hear from some players. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and toss it to a quick interview with Anna Prosser and, of course, Arsenal Perry, the winner of the first round nine match that we actually got to see on stream. Take it away, Anna. Thanks, guys. I am back here backstage with Arsenal. How are you feeling right now at the end of a marathon day of Pokemon? Uh, you know, there's no words to really describe the feeling. Um, you know, I didn't know if I was going to make it here. My flight uh, was uh, delayed, and then they took us off the aircraft at like 10:30 uh, at night last night. So I didn't know if I was going to make it, but last second they found an aircraft. Um, I, I it's been my, it's my first um, international championship, so I feel really excited, and uh, you know, just excited is the best word I can probably do right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this has been a very long day, so we will keep it short and sweet. But I want to hear a little bit about the game you played. Casters were really interested in your use of Mudsdale. Tell us a little bit about your team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, everyone knows Gavin is a well-accomplished player. Um, and so to see that my last round was against him and it was a make, it, make or break for both of us. Um, but when I got into team preview, I, I saw that Mudsdale was, uh, you know, the uh, very key for me. Um, you know, he has three um, round week Pokemon and, and Mudsdale is, has been pretty much uh, the MVP of my day today. Um, and so after losing game one, I just had to fight back within game two and three. Um, and, you know, I'm still a little bit in shock that I'm making it uh, to day two tomorrow. But um, it's, it's, uh, it's been exciting today. That's awesome. Making it to day two tomorrow is such an accomplishment. We're going to let you get as much rest as possible. Recuperate that voice. My voice sorry, yeah, my voice is a bit gone. Yeah, sorry. No, no problem at all. That means you've really committed yeah, to the day. Of, uh, preparation calls with my friends. I do want to give them a uh, shout out. There's so many friends, but you know who you are if you help me, um, you know, with, with the calls and, 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 and working through, you know, this is how we should play certain matchups. So I really appreciate it, guys. It's, it's all for you. Um, and then I came here for you guys as well. So. That's awesome. Keeping that warm friendship vibe alive. Thank you so much and congratulations again. We'll go back to our casters right now. 